So let's start off by doing a little survey. So we're going to take five different people and ask them whether they are whether they do maths or science or perhaps they do both. So let's meet our first person. Okay, so let's say this guy's name is Todd and Todd does both maths and science. And so we'll put Todd under the both tab over there. Let's meet the next person. Okay, so the next person is Jane and Jane does maths. Person number three. So this guy's name is Neville and Neville only does science. Now I know in high school you have to do, if you do science you do maths, but it, this is just a random example. So this is Neville and he only does science. Next we have this cool guy, so we'll call him Rick. He does maths. And then the last person we have is Harry. Now Harry does both maths and science. There's some very important information we can gather from this now and there's a reason why I'm doing this. If you had to walk into a classroom and let's say you had a blindfold on but you had someone who was able to tell you what was happening and let's say you asked can all the people who do maths please stand up? How many people would stand up? Well, now I've got to see if I can remember these names. So I think we said that this was Rick, Jane, Todd, Harry, and I really can't remember what this guy's name was. Okay, let's give him a name of Ernest, because I forgot what his name was. So if you had to ask, can all the people who do maths stand up? Well, Rick and Jane would stand up, so I'm going to say R and J for Rick and Jane, and then Todd would stand up, and so would Harry, okay, because all of the, because Todd and Harry, they do both maths and science, and so a total of four people stood up. That person with the blindfold then writes down in, in their book that there are four people who do maths. The person then asks how many people do science, so Ernest will stand up, and Todd and Harry will stand up again, because they also do, they also do science, they do both maths and science, and so that would be three people. The person with the blindfold then walks out of the classroom, takes off the blindfold, has a look and says, oh, okay, wow, seven people in a class. That's quite a decent sized class. But the problem is, is that there aren't seven people. There are five. And so what we have to always keep in mind in probability is that you mustn't count the same people twice. And that is what the following formula will help us with. But first, I just want to ask one more thing. If that person who had the blindfold asked the class, how many of you do maths or science? Would you agree that everyone would put their hands up, right? So in probability, when we say who does maths or science, it doesn't mean that they have to do one or the other. When we say or, it means, it means either they do maths or they do science, or they do both. It doesn't matter. So, if some, so, so for example, Todd or Harry, they do maths and science. But if someone had to ask them, do you do maths or science? They would say, yes, I do. It doesn't mean you have to do maths or science. You can also do both. That's what or means. And so there's this formula in probability, and I'm simplifying things quite a bit, but it, it goes like this. So it says, if you want to know the number of people who do, for example, maths or science, what you have to do is you add all the people who do maths. So how many people do maths? We said that there were four people. It was Rick, Jane, Todd, and Harry. So that's four. Then you add that to all the people who do science. And that would be three people. That was Ernest, Todd, and Harry. But then you have to be careful because now we have counted certain people twice. Todd and Harry have just been counted twice because they were counted for maths, that's they were part of that four, and they were also counted for science. And so you have to minus all the people who do maths and science. Okay, so this over here was maths only, or well, not maths only, but just maths. This over here was science. And then we have to minus all the people who do maths and science. And so let's see, four plus three minus the people who do maths and science, there's two of them, and that gives us a total of five. And so the number of people who do maths and science is five. So now in mathematical terms, the formula that you would typically see in class goes like this. 
So because we're busy with probability, we'll have to say P. Then usually in probability, we are busy with different kind of events. So in the previous example, we were busy with maths and science. So we'll just call it A and B. Now, if you want to work out how many people do A or B, the mathematical way to say or is like that. Your teacher might just use the letters, the word or itself. But mathematically, it's a U symbol like that. Then how did we work out how many people did maths or science? Well, we added up all the people who do maths. So we'll take all the people who do A. You add it up with all the people who do science, which we'll call B. And then you have to subtract the people who you are counting twice. And they are the people who do both of the things. So they are the people who do A and B. That symbol there represents and. So with our example that we did above, the or was the maths or science. This part here was the maths and that was four people. This part here was the science which was there were three people and then this part here was the number of people who did both which was two. And so the maths or science there were five people. So that formula that I've just put in the block is extremely important. It's one of the most useful formulas for probability and so yes, just get very used to that formula. It helps a lot.